And we're back. So the, um, the Wi-Fi is tricky. I might have to try and do this again. Anyway, I'm going to flip this around and we're going to take a look at the corn and the sunflowers in the garden. Ta-da! There is corn and there are sunflowers. So check this out. Uh, this year, well, in past years, let's start with corn. In past years, I had trouble with corn worms. Hello, bee. Uh, they've come into the garden. They've uh, laid their eggs, the cornworm moth has come and laid their eggs inside all of uh, my corn and I've had worms in every single ear of corn and so this year I'm doing this neat trick here which is putting a clothespin on each ear of corn as it emerges, as the silks emerge. So you want to let the silks emerge here. Doo -doo -doo quite get under here. Let me show you. All right. And then right underneath, give it, you know, like half an inch to an inch and then hook on that clip. And that prevents any of the larvae that are the eggs and larvae that are laid on the silks from penetrating down into the ear of corn right here. So once that's uh, on there, that should keep anything bad from happening. Now, other people use oil and they will uh, put a couple drops of oil on the tip of each ear of corn. Let me see if we can get over here. No, nope, that's too hard to see. Sorry, this is hard to see. Uh, so, you know, you can do the the ears. Gosh, sorry guys. This is hard to see because the sun is at my back. So, anyway, you can see that this is a this is a trip worth a trick worth trying. Uh, the it's really easy and clothespins are really pretty inexpensive. So just to clarify, I have a bed that is uh, four by four, so it's 16 square feet and I've got about 15 to 20 stalks of corn growing in that in that space. And it's tasseled out doing very well. And, um, and now as the silks come out, oh, also, cool tip you should know. Let me flip this back around if I can. All right, cool tip that you should know about silks and when to start testing for the milk stage is about uh, 18 to 21 days after the silks emerge, mark a calendar and start checking for the milk stage. And what that means is you pull back the corn husk and you pierce a kernel with your thumbnail. And if a milky fluid comes out, it's in the milk stage, it's sweet, it's ready to eat. This is for sweet corn. Uh, if it's a clear liquid that comes out, it's not ready, uh, so wait a little longer, keep testing every couple of days. And if no liquid comes out, it's too late, it's past its prime, it's outside the milk stage, and you should just continue to let it grow and dry on the stock for cornmeal or, you know, for dry later on. So that's a trick about corn and how to know, how to time it out so you know when your corn is ready. Okay. That's corn, let's move on to sunflowers. I'm gonna switch back. Sunflowers, so you can see here, I actually grew sunflowers this year in a raised bed, and I'll tell you why. It's like a jungle in here, good Lord. So these are, uh, there's some a variety of sunflowers here. This one at the top is Lemon Queen, which is the best sunflower to grow for pollinators. Bees love it. And then these are like mammoth, Russian mammoth and some others. And then I've got a few shorter varieties that are growing over here that have yet to open and reveal themselves. Um, the cool thing about sunflowers, and I'll tell you, I've got, um, I've had really rotten luck with sunflowers my whole gardening life. And I can't explain why that is exactly, except that every time I plant them, I plant copious amounts of seeds. And every time the, uh, the bugs come in and eat them. And I've tried starting them indoors under grow lights and planting them out and cloching them with plastic covers. And even then, the sow bugs come in and eat them. And so finally, I said, screw it. I'm just gonna grow them in a raised bed over here. And you know, that 12 inch raised bed with drip irrigation and a little bit of cloching of the seedlings as they came up did the trick. So that's my secret. It's not a big secret, but there you go. A uh, couple things to remember. Uh, sunflowers and corn are both heavy feeders, so they really do need a fair amount of fertilizer or amendment, soil amendment, compost, worm castings, and organic fertilizer 
throughout the growing season. So if you aren't fertilizing every month, you probably will want to start doing that. And they do need plenty of water as well. So here we are in drought stricken Los Angeles, but the drip irrigation delivers water at the roots where it's important. So we're pretty good there. Anyway, uh, that is our quick tip for the day. I hope you will subscribe to the Garden Nerd YouTube channel. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers. I can't stand it. Help us out. Share this video with your friends and subscribe. Happy gardening.